Hey everyone, it's Phil Hall of Westfair Communications. And if you're like me, you've spent the past several months sheltering at home and supporting your local restaurants. And you can imagine how that turned out for me. <laughs> There's a lot more of me now than there was when the pandemic started. I need help, and if you need help too, well, we've come to the right person. Patrick Allen Jones is on the screen with me. He is a personal trainer, yoga teacher, Reiki practitioner, life coach, motivational speaker. You do a lot of work, don't you, Patrick? I do, man. Uh, you know, it's, it's an evolution. It doesn't happen all at the same time. It's been an evolution in my own life, and it's became more from one thing to the next from that evolution. I, yeah. <laughs> well, well, what's the first step for folks like me who've uh, been home too long, are out of shape, have not kept a good diet, and are also sort of getting stir-crazy about uh, not being out with people except to go to the store to get more food to eat at home. Yeah, Phil, you know, it really comes down to uh, under, like w when, when somebody's in that place, like right now, I mean, obviously COVID happened. When, uh, when someone's in that place right now, you, you get comfortable, right? You get in this okay. rut of comfort. And you and I both know, like when you're in this place of comfort, nothing happens good. You know, you're, you're not feeling good about yourself. You're not taking any action to really what you want. And so from my, from, you know, going up and weight in my life and working with clients, you know, and seeing what, what needs to actually happen is getting clear on an outcome of what you actually want. So like, like you could take action all day long, you could take a walk, but maybe that's not even in alignment to what you truly want, you know? And so it's like, well, what, what does Phil actually want? Well, Phil wants to feel good today. All right. Well, what needs to happen for that to happen? Well, you can, you can go walk outside and you can, you can achieve that outcome. You can achieve that desire, right? So it doesn't have to be, and we, you know, you, I mentioned, we talked about this, but it doesn't have to be the all or nothing where it's like, I have to go to the gym because then you're attached to the thought of, I have to go to the gym where I'm going to do nothing. And, you, and that doesn't work. And that's that like sabotage mindset that I tell you, most people have, it's the all or nothing. Well, no, you, if you want to feel good today and have some energy, Phil, you just, what, what do you want? I want to have energy. Okay. What does that look like? Um, well, it looks like just me getting up and taking a walk without your phone on. So shut your phone off and, and you'll increase energy right away. And that will get you what you want. It, it, it's really that simple. <laughs> it, people overcomplicate it, but it's that simple. It really is. Well, I mean, it's listening to it, it makes perfect sense for me. But what, yeah. what really is the first step supposed to be? I mean, I could go outside and take a walk. I've actually tried that. But it's just me walking down an empty street. And it wasn't really all that motivating. I started going back to the gym when they opened here in the state of Connecticut, but uh, I'm doing that on a regular basis. It feels good. But you know, the gym, the gym, my gym at least is empty. I was yeah. expecting a crowd of people, and I maybe yeah, it doesn't. I know it's, it's yeah. empty right now. I, I know, I know. You know, really, the first step is is to decide. Mm -hmm. Is to decide. So when you decide, you you cut off all other possibility. That's yeah. it. It's like w w really, the first step is what do I want? I want to to feel good today. All right. So you decide, you make the decision in that moment. I'm deciding to feel good today and then make a commitment of an action of a win. Uh, I call these micro wins. What is a micro win that, that will allow you to create what you want? And so if, if it's walking for 20 minutes outside, great. If it's doing 20 push-ups, great. If it's uh, whatever, uh -huh. you know, but deciding, focusing, and then what do I want? What's yeah. a commitment to get there? And then, and then what's that win? What's that win look like? Yeah. I've also found, too, the, the isolating aspects of the past few months ha have really done a number on me. Granted, I have Zoom, which we're using now, and I also use yeah. Skype. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's not the same as being with people. And I've also, I'm wondering, too, if people are getting a little too comfortable with this. Because I did an interview uh, earlier this week, and I actually had to uh, almost plead with the publicist who insisted we have, no, we can do this by phone. It's like, no. I'm 10 minutes away from, from your client. I could just as easily see them. I'll wear a mask. Yeah. The publicist yeah. Didn't want, really didn't want me uh, there in person, even though we're yeah. not uh, passing along fatal yeah. viruses to each other. Yeah, I think, I think with that, it, it's when, when we create a frame and an environment that we get comfortable in, um, even if we're able to step outside that comfort zone, the brain gets so framed into that way of thinking and attached to that that even if uh, we could step outside, we don't. Really, really like this situation today, really is just a meta metaphor for life. It's like, well, where else in all areas of your life are you just in this comfort zone? That's yeah. the way I look. 
It's like, where, where in your, your, your health or your body are you in this box? Because like COVID put us in a box yeah. and we're not giving ourselves permission to get outside the box, whether it's in your marriage, your health, your relationships, um, whether in any area of life, your health, your body, um, the way you want to look and feel, um, your job, your career, your money, it doesn't matter when you put yourself in that box, like, like, like not go 10 minutes and put a mask on, uh-huh. like you're only going to get that. And then it, it's, so what, what I do is I, I, I just immediately, uh, I don't allow myself to go there. It's like, no, I want to connect. I'm yeah. not going to, I'm just going to make the date. Let's meet in 10 minutes. Let's go outside. Let's, let's put masks on. Yeah. Like I decide in the moment. And that's what it comes down to is not letting somebody else's mind, uh, their ideas enter your mind when it's, and, and allow that to control what you do or don't do. It's like, no, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do. And we're going to be outside in 10 minutes. Cool. Like you good with that? All right, cool. It's like, it's like entering their mind and, 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 and shattering it with that interrupt. Yeah. I, but I've also found too that a lot of people want their ideas in your mind. And I think if they had the opportunity, they would have bashed you over the head of a crowbar to get the <laughs> ideas into your mind. I'm thinking because uh, a lot of my communications over the past few months have been through online forums. And I had uh, someone I know who had a picture of himself wearing a mask in a car. Mm. And I had remarked on it with an R rated joke, which I'm not going to repeat for, for this point. <laughs> Email if you want to hear it. But. Uh, yeah. And I got, it was a joke. It, it wasn't meant to be mean-spirited. Or, and I got such hostile turn. People have really become, well, we see this in the news, but people have really become extraordinarily touchy over these past few months. And I, and I think this situation has exacerbated it. Yeah, I see it. All, I see it. It's, uh, it's defensive. It's mm-hmm. because they don't feel in control, yeah. ultimately. When, when someone does not feel in control, uh, everything becomes defensive. Everything is a trigger. And if you're not, if you're not in, a, in a perspective mindset or a growth mindset of being able to uh, understand that you're in a trigger, then everything's going to trigger you emotionally because you don't feel a sense of control. And us as human beings, we want to be in control of everything. Yeah. So when we're not in control, we kind of put the, that mask on, right? And we get defensive and and, you know, New York area, we're in Connecticut, <clears throat> we know that kind of exists already. But with COVID, it's like, it is even worse. Like, I've never seen more people disconnected than ever before because the mask's on. You don't, no one looks at the eyes. It's just like a mask and it's, it's shut down. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, my concern is that it's, it's going it's, to, it's, it's making the connection more disconnected. Even when we open back up, mask goes off. Yeah. I, I'm not too sure that, that it's going to be difficult to kind of, it's a new world. We're in a new world. Oh, no. I mean, yeah. it's what, no one knows what normal is anymore. And, and, and what I know is this, man, from like my experience and working with, with people is, is that you have to know, yeah, you have to be you and know you, right. Mm-hmm. Ultimately. And, and if you are controlled by these other mindsets or the government and you don't have a foundation yourself emotionally or mentally, then you're going to be controlled and you don't even know that you're being controlled. Right. <laughs> it's like, Oh, you want to take me that way? Okay. You want to drag me that way? Okay. You know, yeah. I'll lose money this week. Okay. It's like, I'll make money this week. Okay. There's no, there's no foundation. There's no foundation. You know? Well, I, I've been following you on Facebook for a long time. And during this past few months, you've been doing a series of videos showing your own uh, physical wellness uh, progress that you've made very substantial progress too. What kind of feedback have you gotten from that? That's a great question. Uh, feedback, you know, I, I, you know, my my mission is is impact. It's it's truth, vulnerability, it's connection, and with within that, impacting and helping others through my own story, my own transformation. And that's really, uh, if if I if I have a breakthrough, I like to to ch- share, share it with people. If I if I learn something that helped me, I want to share that with people because I'm no different than anybody else. And that. And so and I say that because the feedback, it's not even feedback. It's more of, you know, here's the real raw uh, of a guy who uh, I was 25 pounds heavier during COVID. I wanted to document uh, really for myself, uh, but to show others what's actually possible. But really it was for me. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I was, was just as what's possible. So um, it's people are, 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 are doing the opposite. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing people gaining that COVID-19, but I, I made the decision in, in before COVID in, in February to, I, to, to decide uh, to step through the fear and say, this is where I'm at. 
you know, this is not working for my, my standards. This is what I want. And I just went in that direction. And I, it's not easy, but I, I made a plan for that, you know? So I, I'm, I, my hopes is that by showing people that, um, the commitment I had, it will inspire them to take action, uh -huh. you know, from a place of abundance, not a place of scarcity, because you and I both know, like COVID is, it, the gyms are closed, gyms yeah. are closed. Um, and, and I still was able to drop 25 pounds and, and lean down, I think 15% body fat. I haven't checked in a while, but, but I did that. Uh, it's not an accident, no. not an accident. And anyone can do that. And I just wanted to show what was possible by showing, you know, social media, uh, what I've done with myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, cause I, I get to a place of status quo too, where it's, it's comfortable. And I was there four months ago. I was comfortable. You know, I had done, um, CrossFit for two years. I had recovered from bulimia uh, and binge eating disorder. And so I was in a place in my health where, okay, I dropped some weight from recovering from bulimia uh, in CrossFit, like 50 pounds. Um, and then I was comfortable at 210. And then I'm, I got bored. I got bored at CrossFit. And I knew that I knew I was ready for another level. Um, and that's when I made the decision uh, to over to, to step into the next thing for me, uh, which was scary, very scary. You mentioned truth at the, the beginning of uh, this last passage. Yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of that, that Jack Nicholson line from the movie, I think it's a, a few good men, you can't handle the truth. Yeah. Can, can people not handle truth, especially when it's yeah. a very unflattering truth presented to them without sugarcoating? So I, I've, I believe, and from my experience, is that they can't, they, they're, they're not willing to accept the truth. Uh -huh. The truth really is the facts. You know, like in my life, when, when I have not actually, when I, when I ran from the facts of the, of the truth of my life, of what's current going on, my life got worse. Uh -huh. I, my life got worse every single time. When I didn't acknowledge the truth of myself, uh, I didn't deal with the problem. You know, I just did a podcast on this last weekend, you know, uh, going from broke. You know, I didn't want to acknowledge my broke mindset. I didn't want to acknowledge the fact that my finances were at zero. I, I didn't want to acknowledge. I was afraid to, so I kept doing things that were not in alignment to getting out of that broke mindset. So uh, once I was able to kind of um, look at the truth behind that and what's not working, I could then finally make a, a decision uh, to change it into the direction that it would have want, you know? So it, it's, it's no different. It's it just about the alignment uh, of focusing on that. Uh, does that make sense? Makes perfect sense yeah. to me. I, I know where you're coming from in that. And it's something that's, which is why I wanted you on this episode uh, to inspire people too, yeah. because they, they shouldn't accept the status quo and they shouldn't be making yeah. excuses and they shouldn't be saying, uh, do, pull a Scarlett O'Hara and say, I'll think about it tomorrow. I don't think yeah. you can mention Scarlett O'Hara anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Where, but you can't just keep thinking about it tomorrow and putting it off uh, tomorrow yeah. or just like saying, you know, I'm, I'm going to come, come Monday, I'm going to go back to the gym or I'm going to yeah. either do it or get off the pot. And yeah, so what I, what I tell people is it, 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 it's either a priority or it's not. Yeah. And, and it, it, if it's not a must, uh -huh. then it's just a goal. Yeah. And if it's a goal, it'll never happen because you and I both know, and all the people that I'm working with and even myself, like every time I said, I want this, uh, I will try to get it. Uh, it it's, I want it. It's a desire, but it's not a must. Yeah. And we can turn the, 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 the shoulds. I should lose weight. I should, you know, uh, get a healthy, happy relationship. I should make more money. I should get another job. I should get a, a more pay. That uh -huh. never results in what you want. It's yeah. when you turn the shoulds into a, a must. I must hire a personal trainer. I must, um, you know, hire a bodybuilding coach, which I did, which I did. So four months ago, I knew in order to, to get to the level of body fat and, and, and where I wanted to go, I, it was a must to hire a coach to facilitate my results. Yeah. So Which I did. Is interesting because, and it's interesting that you're admitting it because you're a coach helping yeah. other people and you are getting help for yourself. So yeah. there's, there's nothing wrong with asking people for help. And a lot of people are very either yeah. shy or uh, agitated about uh, raising their hand and saying, uh, over yeah. here, I need your help. Yeah, you, know, you know what that is? That, what? That's, the, that's the ego. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I, I learned this. Uh, you know, the hard way so many times in my life, but it's the ego uh, of wanting, of asking for help. It's when you can surrender and say, look, I actually, I don't know how to do this. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if I can do it by myself. It's uh -huh. very hard to, to recognize that's just the ego. 
And the ego will never get you what you want. It will never yeah. fulfill your, your, your highest dreams, your, your possibilities of what you want in your life because it'll always bring you, keep you safe. Yeah. Always. Can I ask how, how has your business been during the COVID period? Because your business is a one-on-one -on -one person to person yeah. business. And you, I, I would think in concept, at least you're not getting the same results here on the zoom screen. Yeah. So I like before you, I just got off a coaching session with a client. Um, you know, I was always doing online, online all over the world with clients and it is, it, it has actually has flourished. Uh, it is, uh, my own, my own business has 10 X, uh, because of COVID. Um, because I was able to pivot and, and help out uh, other companies that are struggling to help coach and consult their clients. And so I had to pivot and make new offers or not make new, look for other opportunities to help other businesses coach their clients, uh, and rather than just making my own company, which I do have, but pivoting in the direction of, an, of helping with my uh, performance, with my high coaching performance with another company. So consulting. So I was able to do that and, and really uh, really do well with that. And that's been allowed me to uh, get to where I am today and, and stay above the water and, and really higher because, because of that. Um, and I'm very grateful for that. But it really was because I made a decision to pivot and to uh, adapt rather than, than play small uh, and, and be controlled by the story that, oh, COVID's happening. Uh, I, I have to just kind of, you know, not take action. I have to just, I have to, you know, stay with a thousand, you know, unemployment. I have to, you know, I can't write the book this year. Or I can't now go on vacation. Like, oh, poor me. Pity, pity. Yeah. It's that pity party. It's not, you know, no, I, I decided to shatter those stories and say, no, I don't want to just stay at a couple thousand a month. I want $20,000 a month. No, I want $30,000 a month. Uh, and, and reframe that mindset. <laughs> it's going to sabotage that. Yeah. Well, I'm, I, th I think when the history books are published about what has happened here, it's going to be a very Darwinian experience. It is going to be survival of the fittest, not necessarily survival of the fattest. And those <laughs> who, can, who can adapt and pivot are going to be the ones coming out of this. Because uh, I'm, what I'm doing here at the Westchester and Fairfield County Business Journal, it seems every week we're writing articles about uh, small <laughs> businesses that close or Fortune really? 100 companies that are uh, yeah. looking into bankruptcy or major retail chains and restaurant chains going under, uh, they just didn't adapt and they didn't, uh, for whatever yeah. reason, I, I mean, every story is different, but yeah. uh, if you're not adapting to changing times and changing pressures, you're going to be left, not only left behind, but maybe even left in the ground. Yeah. yeah it's unfortunate. That's, that's the way it works is, you know, you look at all the companies, I think it's like 2000, you know, nine or really after nine 11 and then, you know, 2009 crash, it's, Companies were built from the problems that now existed uh, and the ones that didn't solve those problems that currently existed and, and meet those demands were the ones that went down. So it, no doubt in my mind are they going to continue going down because they, did not, they didn't have an action plan to pivot and, and change direction. Uh, I mean, you see people, I see people, you know, they're selling these masks everywhere. They're changing, they're changing business models to selling masks and they're doing, they're doing well, right? So... Um, yeah, it, it's. I, I imagine when you're seeing it all happen, these these interviews that you're doing. Um, but you have to, and I, and I call it. I call it. It's what's called a growth mindset. You've got to. You've got to be ready to pull the trigger in any direction uh, and, and get out of that comfort. You know, whether it's the business or any area of life. I mean, it's no different. Mm -hmm. It's not different. What is your philosophy on the concept of failure? Is there anything like true failure, or is failure a blessing in disguise? That's a great question. You know. It's interesting because until you realize that failure is an opportunity to, to shift mm -hmm. and learn a lesson in that failure that you could not have learned unless you went through that failure. Yeah. Um, and I've learned that in my own life is that you really can't uh, make a new decision in a different direction until you learn from that failure. The problem is that my own life and also working with, with clients and consulting is that when you don't see, when you protect the failure and, and not willing to look at it and learn from it uh, and then solve the problem that you couldn't solve before by hiring, by creating new tools or resources to, to, to move that direction, then, then failure is just is failure. And it's, it's, you go into this pity place, the shame places, oh, we, you know, or the ego gets in the way. So I like to say uh, fail forward. Uh -huh. accept the failure what do you learn from this 
and how can we move forward and, and do that as fast as possible. Um, there's not such thing as, as perfect. I mean, it's just taking action to move forward, take action to move forward and failing. I couldn't tell you how many times, I mean, I went up, I was obese more in my life than I was uh, fit and healthy. Mm-hmm. I failed so many times in my life uh, because I never had a foundation of health. Even though I've been a health coach trainer for 17 years, I wasn't truly, I didn't really truly build a foundation for until the last five. Uh, where I can actually say I'm practicing what I'm preaching. I was the guy, you know, binge eating and purging his food out at nighttime, failing, but I didn't accept that failure. I actually saw it as, uh, as my identity, yeah. who I was, who I believe myself to be. And I say that because, you know, anyone watching this right now, yeah. failure becomes your identity, meaning uh, I'm bad, I'm, you know, I messed up, I'm not good. It becomes who you are. And if you use that, it, you stay stuck in that. And you say, fix it, and you'll never move forward if you say, oh, I did this, I learned from this, and this is how I'm going to move forward out of this and not be it as an identity. Does that make sense, Phil? Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, this isn't the first time that we've conversed on this because I think about two yeah. years ago I interviewed you for the Fairfield County Business Journal, and the yeah. article is online at westfaironline.com. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was your consultancy. It was Binge Free Dad, I believe it was called. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at the time, I was uh, creating uh, programs for folks that uh, struggle with binge eating disorder and yeah. binge eating. And then very successfully was able to take someone that binge ate for 15, 20 years and, and in a matter of seven days, stop and permanently stop without going to a recovery center, without going to doctors and therapists, um, by really interrupting their pattern and, and shifting direction pretty quickly. Uh, but as I evolved, I, I found myself, that's, that program still exists, but as I evolved, it wasn't just, uh, that's not the only person I could serve at the highest level. So, you know, I, I um, started working with addiction all last year, a lot of addiction, a lot of different addiction programs. Uh, and then I, and I have those up and running. I've worked with people in addiction, but now it's become more high performance and consulting and working with companies and uh, at a higher level with employees and helping them feel better, look better. Uh, increased productivity and coaching as well. So uh, recently I just uh, created a, a, an entirely new company, consulting company called the Thrive Institute, uh, which we help uh, in, increase the productivity for clients using high performance coaching. So really, that's really my mission this year is to really help uh, CEOs and entrepreneurs and, and really uh, get the companies performing higher, especially during these COVID times right now, it, it has gone down. So they're, they're needing you know, some speaker speaking trainings and, and, and virtual things that they're doing right now. So that's would have been my, one of my big focuses on top of the, the one-on-one coaching that I do. Patrick, if we were to have this conversation again a year from now, assuming that there is a vaccine or some sort of drug therapy to mitigate against COVID, where do you think people as a whole are going to be? Are we going to bounce back to where the things were before the pandemic? Or is this going to be still the residue of uh, what the pandemic has done to us both physically and emotionally that's all that's up to the individual that's dependent on the attachment the individual allows themselves to have in the situation because all this is is a situation i tell this to my kids i said it yesterday they were here my my place is uh it's current it's not permanent Uh and they know it like i literally they say that to me like I, when I say it, I've said it for years and, and now they say to me, daddy, you know, this is just current. It's not permanent. It's kind of like my, my mantra, right? But it's a mindset. Yeah. And so the people, the individuals that will, will thrive beyond this or just go back to normal or the ones that will understand that it's that the emotion is current and not permanent. The thought about the situation is current. It's not permanent. And if they can understand that they can just detach from that, uh-huh. You know, they can move on. But a year from now, when things do go back to normal, yeah. if there's still a, an emotional attachment of fear to go outside or an emotional attachment to, to hold on to that, that, that fear, uh, that person will not feel a sense of normalcy. Yeah. That's up to the individual. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. And Patrick, we're running toward the end of this episode, but if our viewers wanted to continue the conversation with you, how could they get in touch with you? Yeah, great question. I think the fastest way, uh, I'll, I'll give out a couple pieces, is um, I thrive, the, the I thrive in life.com. Um, you can go to that website, uh, reach me directly. Uh, my, my personal cell, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to give that out or an email. I mean, what's best? I'll give that the email, not the, not the cell. Yeah, you know? <laughs> it's like, okay. You've got some pretty sketchy calls. Yeah, out, yeah. So. Uh, Patrick yeah. at uh, I thrive in life.com. That would be the best place. Yeah. 
Excellent. Well, Patrick, yeah. Andrews, thank you so much for being with us on today's episode. Sure. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Folks, we'll see you again next week. Have yourselves a good one.